That's cool. Oh, hi! <laughs> um, we're gonna film here because there's a banjo catfish that's out. This guy we've had for, I don't know, seven years? Five years? Something like that. Long time. We see him like once or twice a year. That's it. We even did a whole renovation on this tank, took everything out, didn't find him, thought he had just mysteriously died. But there he is! He's back! Uh, let's talk about hognose snakes. <laughs> So today's big question is, are hognose snakes venomous? The short answer is, yeah, actually they are. The long answer is, they're mildly venomous. So let me explain. Obviously, if this was a venomous snake to the point where it could kill people, I would not be holding it free-handedly. People who free-handle venomous snakes, truly venomous snakes, are being irresponsible about their snake keeping and they're just asking to get bit someday. So this snake, no, it's not going to kill a person, but it is mildly venomous. Now, what makes this snake different than like cobras or rattlesnakes is that it does have small teeth that curve backwards, you know, like hooks, just like all snakes do, except for egg-eating snakes, they're the one exception. But in addition to those smaller teeth, they have enlarged posterior maxillary teeth. And if you had watched this video before watching this one, you would know exactly what that means. But if you haven't, you should watch that video after this one because there's a lot of other terminology in there that's really important to know if you're a snake keeper. Anyway, today though, I'll just tell you, enlarged posterior maxillary teeth means that they have large rear teeth in the upper part of their mouth. They have a pair of them, one on each side. But instead of being hollow, to like allow them to inject venom into their prey, they instead just have a groove that runs along the side of their tooth, and the groove a lot kind of helps channel their venom, which is really just a toxic saliva, down to the edge of the tooth. But since they don't have a very good method of venom delivery, they instead have to allow their toxic saliva to run down the groove of their tooth, and then they have to physically chew it into their prey. Snakes with this tooth structure, including hognose snakes, mangrove snakes, false water cobras, and a few others, are considered opisthoglyphous, or in other words, rear-fanged colubrids. These snakes are highly specialized eaters, and they prefer to eat amphibians in the wild, specifically frogs and toads. And what they'll do is they will grab the, say, toad sideways, and the toad's defense mechanism is actually to puff up with air. And then that kind of backfires on the toad, though, because the, the large teeth in the back of their mouth will kind of pop the toad, and then they gnaw on the toad to kind of physically push in their venom. And that venom will paralyze the toad to kind of subdue it so they're able to eat it. So unlike having something similar to a venom sac, like you would imagine a lot of truly venomous species have, the hognose snake has a duvernoise gland that contains its toxic saliva. I keep saying toxic saliva because it is uh, specifically made to affect amphibians and other small prey items. They eat other things too, like small rodents, they'll eat small birds, they'll even eat eggs. Hognoses in the wild aren't terribly picky if they're hungry enough. Anyway, their toxic saliva will subdue their prey but it won't affect humans nearly as much. If you were to get bit by a hognose snake, you would first off have to like wedge your hand to the back of their mouth where those enlarged teeth are, and then you would have to let them gnaw on you for several minutes in order for them to physically push their saliva into your skin. But if all of that were to happen, and you were to get bit and gnawed on for several minutes by a hognose snake, what would most likely happen is that you would experience some itchiness, maybe localized swelling to around where the bite occurred, as well as maybe some tenderness. But if you just take a couple Benadryls and wait a day or two, chances are all of your symptoms will be gone within 12 to 48 hours. That all being said, some people do react differently than others. It's very similar to like a bee sting. Uh, you might get some itchiness and swelling for some people, whereas some people are allergic to bee stings and they can react much more severely to one. The same thing with hognose snakes. Most people are gonna have just very minor symptoms after a bite, but some people, if you have like other allergies or you have a more um, sensitive immune system, you might react more severely. Getting a hognose snake to bite you in the first place is pretty difficult, in all honesty. They, even when they're nervous or they feel threatened, they're gonna hood up and kind of puff out their cheeks a little bit, like I was hoping she, yeah, like she's doing a little bit here. But if they're to strike, they're gonna keep their mouth closed, uh, most of the time. So instead of biting, they're just gonna like boop you with their nose. 
To get a hognose snake to actually bite you, they have to think that you are food. They're not going to bite and hang on to a predator, of course, because in the wild, if they were to bite and hang on to a hawk, the hawk is just going to turn around and kill them and eat them. So they're not going to go after you because they either think you're a predator or you are too big to be a potential prey item for them. Now the two instances where a hognose snake might actually bite and latch on would be when it, of course, is kind of fooled or tricked and it thinks that you're food. So that could be whether you're like playing with a bunch of mice or holding a bunch of toads and it smells their scent on your hands. It might get confused and bite you because honestly, these snakes are really cute, but they're not that bright. The other instance would be if they are striking at their food and they miss and they hit like your finger instead. And so they're already in food mode, so they're gonna latch on even though they know that you're not food. They think you're the mouse that they're going after. Those are honestly the two most common reasons why a hognose snake is actually gonna bite you. So as you can imagine, it's very uncommon for that to happen. If you are hesitant on getting a hognose snake because you think it might kill you, don't worry, it's not going to kill you. The worst thing that's gonna happen, and again, this is a very, very rare occurrence, is if it were to bite you, and if you let it gnaw on you, for whatever reason, for several minutes, then you might get swelling, tenderness, and itchiness for a couple days. That's really the worst case scenario. So don't let their mild venom or their toxic saliva deter you from owning one of these awesome pet snakes. Question from off camera. Would you recommend them as a beginner snake? <laughs> Thanks, Ed. That's a, all right, we can talk about that. Hognose snakes are sometimes considered a beginner snake. I honestly don't think they make good beginner snakes though because they are picky. They are picky eaters. Even just looking at them funny will make them refuse food for three weeks, it seems. So if I were you and I was contemplating getting my very first snake and having it being a hognose, I would compromise and get a corn snake instead. They're much better eaters. They're just great overall snakes. And once you get the hang of taking care of snakes in general, then your next step could be a hognose. And when you do get that hognose snake someday, leave it alone until it is eating for you regularly. Like leave it alone for about a month. It's gonna be difficult to do because I know you wanna hold it, but leave it alone so it's not stressed and it becomes a good eater for you first before you start handling it. Sorry, we got kind of sidetracked there. Anyway, hognose snakes are great. There's nothing to fear regarding their venom or toxic saliva, and you should definitely consider one one day when you're ready. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you next time.